they just going to get out of my way. And I didn't understand. And some mountains here move out the way. Other mountains you're going to have to go through and climb over them. Amen. And then you got to go through some valleys. But through it all, the Lord uses it to teach us how to depend on him. How to trust on him. He has to allow us to go through situations and circumstances so that we learn that we need him. Amen. And I was at one of those moments that the good I was trying to do, it just looked like evil was just resisting everywhere. And it looked like I just couldn't break through. And I was feeling so sorry for myself. And one of the members of the church where I was serving asked me to go by and visit one of their convalescent family members. They didn't tell me a whole lot about who she was. They just said that it was their grandmother and they wanted me to go visit her. And I ain't gonna lie, I didn't feel like it. I'm having a pity party and I'm thinking, oh, here goes something else for me to do. And I barely got strength. But I went ahead anyway. You know, sometimes God got a blessing for you and we, we just can't see like he see. And we'll try to resist it, but the spirit will just make you go anyway and move me on. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go. I went ahead. I went to a nursing home facility and I inquired and because I had never met the woman and I went in and they showed me her room. She was a quadruple amputee. She had both her arms, she was a diabetic. She was about 90 something years old and she had lost both of her limbs, her arms, and she lost both of her legs. All she had was nubs and stubs. And I walked in the room and I saw her and I was shocked. But the first thing I heard out of her mouth is she said, come on in. God bless you, young man. And I went on in and sat by there and I went to minister to her. But the truth is she ended up ministering to me. Has that ever happened to any of you all? You think you're going to minister to somebody, yet God's using them to minister to you. And I had the most delightful time. Oh, she lifted my spirits. And I, thank you, Lord. I left that room that day, and I could hear the Spirit saying to me, whatever you're going through, don't complain. Because when you think about her, she wasn't complaining, and she had everything to complain about but if she could bless the Lord in her circumstances the little bit I was going through was nothing so I'm going to ask you today to push through with me and let's start out 2020 2022 right and let's just push a praise through would, would you mind standing with me and would you mind lifting holy hands unto the Lord would you mind opening your mouth also online, would you just go ahead and start blessing him and just start counting your blessings. The old folks used to say, count your many blessings and start naming them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. So I'm going to challenge you right now to just start opening your mouth and just saying, as God's spirit brings it back to you, because he will, just start saying, Lord, I thank you for that. If he brings up that time that you almost had an accident, but you didn't, then just say, Lord, I thank you for sparing me from that. Or, or you had a surgery and it could have went worse, but it didn't. And just, just all over the place. Let's just bless the name of the Lord. The Bible says it's right for his children to praise him. Now lift your hands and just bless him. Don't wait till you start losing stuff. Don't wait till the devil start putting you through. Don't wait until you get all down and out and then I guarantee you, you'll open your mouth then. Go on and give it to him while you still can. Just say, Lord, I bless Just start calling them out. Lord, I bless you for that. I bless you, Lord, for this. I bless you for remembering me. I bless you for picking me up. I bless you for forgiving me. I bless you for watching over me. I bless you for all the times I didn't pray and you still looked after me. I bless you for having a bad attitude and you didn't kill me. Hallelujah. I bless you when I've given more praise to a football team than I have you, Jesus. 
I bless you when I was more happy for a gift I got than the gift you gave me in Christ. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Count your many blessings and start naming them one by one. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There will come a day when we will not be able to open our mouth and praise him. Amen. There will be a day, so you need to get it in. He might come right now. If he comes right now, don't you want him to say, well done? Don't you want to hear, don't you want him to say, I thank you because you worshiped and praised me? Oh, bless his name. I need, I need, I need about three to four, maybe more, if I got some spiritual people that ain't afraid to go into warfare. Because some of us, I, I keep saying it, and it could be me, I don't know. Tomorrow's not promised to you. There are some that are no longer with us. You can't get it right after death. You got to get it right now. After death, it's over. Whatever it is, it's going to be. Amen. And I want to keep on pressing because I know the devil wants some of us. And I'm, I want to pray that God would keep us. You and I have a privilege to lift him up in praise. And I need some warriors here. I ain't mad at nobody. I'm looking for those who ain't, who ain't afraid. I'm looking for those who are bold in your faith. I'm looking for those of you who don't care what nobody thinks. You just want the Lord to be satisfied. That's what I'm looking for. So I need you to be bold right now. And I need you, if you're one of those kind of people, I need you to lift your holy hands and I need you to begin to ask with me that the Lord would send his ministering spirits that are assigned to us to war for us in our congregation in our homes in our families on our jobs amongst our friends even, even when we're amongst our enemies. We need him to move in a supernatural way. That we get some breakthroughs from some people we've been praying for and they still stuck. Or some things we've been praying about and we're still stuck. Ain't it wonderful that we serve the kind of God we can come to him as we are. But he'll change us and make us over. I need you to do that right now. Heavenly Father. Let our prayers rise up to your holy throne. Help us, Holy Spirit, to pray according to your will. You know exactly what it is you want to do. Blessed be your holy name. You know each and every one of us. You know the numbers of the hairs on our head. You know what thoughts running through our mind right now. You know what thoughts are on the way into our mind. And yet, we call upon you and we ask you to move. We ask you to move right now, Lord. Move amongst us. Move in us. Reach them online supernaturally Lord just intervene in situations and do it in a way that we'll know it was you so we can glorify you and magnify you loose the mouths of those Satan has shut their mouths up and they won't praise you let them know that praise is a weapon of warfare and the devil doesn't want them to praise you because it'll run the devil away from them because Satan wants our praise but the devil is a liar the devil is a liar the devil is a liar. We bind every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus. We will magnify the name of the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Move in our congregation. Move right now, Lord. 
move, move, move. Glorify your own name. Touch us with your finger of love. Shower us with your mercy and grace. Give us boldness. Help us not to be afraid. For you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Forgive us for all the times in 2021 we didn't bless you, we didn't trust you, we didn't depend on you, we didn't wait on you. We can't do nothing about that. But Lord, we can start from right now. Help us to walk with you in the spirit, in your power, in your might. Hallelujah. In your name, you get the honor and the glory. And I want to thank you for the privilege to lift you up. Bless us now as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I feel like worshiping him. Does anybody else feel like worshiping him? Let's sing a congregational hymn while, a, just a congregational song. It's a simple one. It's that hallelujah song. Hallelujah means Jehovah, I praise you. Jehovah is God's name that he uses in his covenant relationship with his people. A covenant just simply means that God has bound himself, obligated himself, made an oath to himself to take care of, to provide for, to protect his children. He will never leave his children alone. Whatever comes against you, it comes against your God when he's Jehovah to you. And he will fight your battle. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll shut a trap door that the enemy set for you. He'll do whatever he needs to do. And he can do that because he's God. Whatever it is you need to walk with him, he'll move it out the way. And so hallelujah means, God, you are my God. Not just my mamas, not just my daddies. Not just my friends, my co-workers, not just my fellow church members, not just the God. You are my God. I have a relationship with you and I trust in you and I depend on you to cover me in the time of trouble and let me hide under your almighty wing. To make a way of escape from me when I'm entrapped and behind the eight ball. To bless me when the world curses me. To lift me up when the world and the enemy and sin is beating me down. You're my God. And so it means Jehovah be praised, which means I exalt you and I celebrate you just because, just because. Everybody say just because. So can I get some help, honey? Would you come up here and come on up here? Thank you. Heal that mic. Let's sing this together, okay, everyone? This is an offering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Come on, sing. sacrifice of your lips to him. Hallelujah, 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join in with us wherever you are. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. With all that's within me. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. With my whole heart, I praise you. Because you're worthy of the praise, yes. Hallelujah. I praise you. He's worthy. Lord, He's I worthy. praise you. Come dear Jesus, Maranatha, come dear Jesus. Hallelujah, come quickly dear Jesus, Maranatha. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. I praise you because you're worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Sing it like you mean it. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all my praise. Hallelujah. All my praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all you've done for us, we want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. This isn't a performance, this is a worship service. Hallelujah. We've come to worship his name. We've come to honor him. We've come to bless him. Hallelujah. We don't need to be moved. Thank you, Lisa Cole, for blessing the Lord online. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. For keeping me from all hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Vanessa, for giving us a hallelujah praise online. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let everybody say amen. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Come on, choir, and bless us. Bless us. Thank you, Lorraine Berry, for that hallelujah online. Amen. He's worthy. Y'all just have to forgive me because if I don't give it, praise if I don't let it out I feel like Jeremiah it's like it was gonna blow me up on the inside amen have you ever tried to keep something in that's just so special you just can't keep it to yourself let me see your hands thank you Beverly for testifying online that's the way it is With the God we serve, he'll keep blowing your mind from faith to faith. When you think he done done something that just he can't be topped, he'll top it. Yes, he will. Thank you, Peter Hill, for your hallelujah way in Connecticut. Hallelujah. I can't keep it. I, I, I'm wondering if there anybody else got the I can't help it. She's just busting up with some praise and some glory and some honor. Hallelujah. I'm glad he got me out of that surgery room when they was working on my heart, changing my valve. I could have died right then and there, and it would have been all right, but he spared me. He didn't have to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't going to make me hurt myself, are you? Thank you. I'm so glad I got enough praise for everybody up in here. Hallelujah. Come on, bless us. Come on.
it all, through it all. 2021. We're in 2022. We're still here. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. We come to worship tonight. And let God know. I'll just say yes. You lead the way. I'm not afraid of what it means for me to say that this life you gave is not my own. I'm trusting you to hear my yes and lead me. Lord, 
Thank you, Ron Mitchell, for praising the Lord with us, my brother. Thank you, Michelle Tarver, for that hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was talking with a friend of mine, Melvin, and we were doing a taping when COVID first hit. We were doing worship with our walls because we didn't know what it was going to look like. We didn't know how we was going to move into the situation in the future. Everything was up in the air. And we happened to be talking. And he told me that his mother used to tell him, how'd it go, Melvin? That you don't wait for worship to do something to you. But how she put it, how she put it, brother? I can't hear you. Melvin, how she put it? You don't remember? He getting old like me. Somebody say pray for the brother. But it was something to the effect that you don't wait till something happens to you to worship God, till he moves you. But you worship God and then that moves him. So it's a choice. We make a decision to give God what he wants just because he's worthy and then God is obligated to give you what you need but too many of us are waiting on God to move us before we offer worship to him and then we don't understand why we don't have what we need you gotta choose to give him what he wants so choir come on I'll help you yes Lord Yes, Lord, my life is yours. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, oh, yes, it is yours. Y'all want to help us? Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I offer you worship and I thank you. If you don't do nothing else for me, you've already done enough. Yes, Lord. My life is yours. Give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. Thank you so much. We have a special blessing today. We have a special blessing today. And I want you to open your Bibles to John chapter 15. I want you to be able to follow along with me. We're going to take a look at just verses 12 through 17. And 
I'm going to ask that our new Camilla, Camilla, Camilla Miller, we just baptized her on December 31st. Thank you, Faith Burke, for sending your blessings to us online. Henry Sawyer, thank you, hallelujah. Camilla, I'm going to ask that you, your daddy would bring you up. The Passover meal was being observed by Jesus and his disciples, which was a significant Jewish celebration honoring the deliverance from Egyptian bondage, servitude, slavery. God delivered them with a mighty hand. And the last of the plagues God sent on the enemies of his people was a death angel. You see, brothers and sisters, God is God. He's in control of everything he made. He has the power of life and death alone in his hands. And he had warned children, the Israelites, through this prophet Moses, that he would deliver them and bring them to the promised land as he told Abraham when he first called him, getting him out of Babylon into a land flowing with milk and honey, where they could be a holy nation unto him. Anybody that killed a lamb that was spotless according to God's directions and placed the blood on the doorpost of their home in Egypt, the death angel, when he came and passed over that house, spared their lives. And everyone who did not have the blood on the doorpost the firstborn male of that household was killed. Friends, if you just do what God says, he'll always spare you when his wrath is poured out. Amen. And so many, many, many centuries, decades, many years after, Jesus and his disciples were in our upper room observing the Lord's Supper. Or oh, we call it the Lord's Supper, the Passover. And Jesus totally changed it, made it new. And it was in that conversation where Jesus established a new covenant with his church. That's why we don't observe Passover. We observe communion, the Lord's Supper. Because the symbols have changed and Jesus, he's that sacrificial lamb that gave his life and he died and his blood paid the price for our sins once and for all. Everybody shout, thank you, Jesus. You don't need to go through no more rituals. You don't need to go through any more sacrificial symbolism. Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. And when they ate the New Testament church, the Lord's Supper, Jesus said, as often as you do this, remember me. Keep my mind, keep me fresh in your mind. Because he knew he was going to go away and be with the Father for some time. And that was the way he said, we'll keep our relationship stoked. will keep the fire burning. Because that adage that says absence makes the heart grow fonder, that's not always true. It depends on how long they're away. And Jesus knew that. 
So he says, I need you as often as you come together and you partake of the bread and the wine. It now symbolizes what I did for you. No more sacrifice and no more journey to Jerusalem once a year for an annual festival. I did it. But I'm also promising you I'm coming back again. And you need to be waiting on me like a bride does her groom. He wants the fire to keep burning. And this communion celebration was done in households. They met in homes. Fathers and mothers broke bread and shared communion with their children as a unit. We've become so institutionalized, so churched, that a lot of the meaning of this has been lost. It's not intimate enough. Not because of our size. Not because of we're just in a church building, a, a worship center. That's not it. It's the fact that we need to practice this in our everyday lives. So the hope, that's the Bible calls it the blessed hope of a Christian is that one day soon coming back for us and we're going to be with him forever. Amen. Amen. He's coming soon. And the word Maranatha is how the saints used to greet one another. Maranatha means come quickly Lord. Come dear Jesus. Come Lord. It means I can't wait to I'm with you forever. So I want you to join in with me and just say unto the Lord, Maranatha. Now look at your neighbor and say, Maranatha. I'm waiting on him. And so tonight I want us to prepare this. If you can prepare your kit. And I'm going to ask Josh, you to bring your daughter up here and center stage and Dad, you can come on up here with him. Amen. You family. Amen. Come on up here with him. You family. And those of you who are worshiping with family members right now, I want you to prepare your kit and I want you to serve each other. It's a covenant. It's a family covenant. The family is the basic unit of all civilization in God's eyes. He didn't, make a, he didn't make a nation first. He made a family first. And the family is the first thing Satan attacked. Am I right, church? Why do you think that our world wants us to let them educate our children? That's Satan's, that's Satan's doing. It's the parents, the fathers, the mothers, the big sisters, the big brothers, the uncles, the aunts. We're supposed to train each other up in the faith and encourage each other and worship together. A family that worships together is a family that stays together. Amen. And so I'm going to ask that we would honor this tradition that they established, Jesus' first followers. And we'll be led in our taking of communion by this family today because they just got Amen. Their precious little daughter who is a brand new member in the family of God through her faith in Jesus Christ. Can y'all do a little better than that? Can you do a little better than that? Go ahead, John. Hold on, we can't hear you, brother. Go ahead, i I'll, I'll do the holding the mic. Camila, this is a symbol. This bread is the symbol of Jesus' body that was broke for us. And Jesus told us to eat it and remember.
remembrance of him. Let's all eat together. This is a symbol of the blood that was shed for our sins. It's because Jesus gave up his life Hallelujah. for us. We can be with him forever Hallelujah. with the Father. Hallelujah. So it's his blood that cleanses us from all, from all of our sins and makes us right with him. Now, this is just a, a, a juice or a drink, but it's, sim it's symbolic to, what, to, to Jesus' blood. So let's drink it in remembrance of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to ask that we would now give her the right hand of fellowship, which simply means we come and embrace her and we welcome her into the Christian family, our eternal family. And I want you to come and show your love to her right now, if you would, if you would. We want this child to know and to feel it. Jesus said, which we're going to talk about, People will know you follow me because you have love for each other. Not hatred, but love. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I like is in your hand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. We're getting in practice. Yes, Lord. It's hard for us to imagine a world, a community, a group of people that love each other so much that nothing can break them apart. Nothing can separate them. It's, we don't see that often in this world. Even amongst Christian congregations, it's, it's rare. But I'm encouraged tonight and I want to encourage you that Jesus wouldn't have told us Jesus wouldn't have commanded us. Jesus wouldn't have died for us unless it truly was possible for us to love one another like he loved us. So I'm going to ask that you would open your Bibles and I'm not going to preach traditionally. I'm going to ask that you open your Bible to John chapter 15. Follow along with me. Verses 12 through 16. Jesus doesn't need me to give a long, drawn-out, elaborate ex exclamation or explanation of what he meant here. It's pretty clear. I want you to feel this tonight. I want you to let this hit your spirit. This is our Lord talking. The scene is Jesus knows he's about to die. No one could take his life, but he's surrendering it. He's 
laying it down. Think about that. Jesus said no one can take his life. He's God. But he surrenders it because he and the Father had agreed that they would not give up on us and that Jesus would pay the price for our sins so that we could receive mercy, rescued, redeemed by faith in him. It's the only way we could escape the terrible torments of everlasting everlasting separation from God in the lake of fire. God didn't want that for us. And so as they was in the upper room, Jesus washed their feet. And he began a discourse of discussion, giving them his last words and directives. He knew that they would need to be kept by his words while he would suffer be resurrected, ascend to be with the Father. They needed for Jesus to assure them they'd be not only all right, but that they would keep the movement going because he would send the Holy Spirit to give them power. In the 15th chapter, he describes his relationship with them as a vine and its branches clearly indicating to them that he's the source of their victory, source of their power. He's the source of their spirit. He's the source that will keep them with everything they need while he goes to be with the Father to prepare their heavenly mansions. He then tells them that the secret to their victory is to not let the enemy sever or separate them, divide them, come in between them and their master and Lord Jesus. He says, abide in me. Remain in me. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. No matter what. To make this clear. He then assures them. That the father. Loves them. Because he sent him to them. Because he loves them. Jesus then. Confirms his love. For them. And he picks it up in verse 12. And he says, this is my commandment, my instructions. This is what I'm telling you to do as your leader, as your Lord, as your Savior, as your God. He tells them in verse 12 to love one another as he has loved them. Remember, he's the vine. He's the source. He's not asking them to do something and play little Jesuses. A lot of people are mixed up in the world today because they have misunderstood the scriptures and they are teaching that we are little gods. And if Jesus could do it, we could do it because he had secret knowledge. That's a lie. That's not what this is saying. He says, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. You can't bear fruit without me. Amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And that's good news because it means we don't have to keep ourselves. He keeps us. Yes, yes, yes. I ain't got to pick myself up out the mud. He got to lift me up. I don't have to hold on to him. He's holding on to me. And I don't have to worry about letting him down. Because I'm not holding him up. Think about it. He's holding us up. So you can only let him down if you, you're the one holding him up. Then you can let him down. But we don't let him down because he's holding us up and he'll never let us down. 
So he says, you love like each other, like I loved you. And my spirit is going to be working in you to do it. Just like sap works through the vines of a tree <laughs> to produce fruit. So we are commanded, Camilla, to love you, honey. And you are commanded to love us. And you are commanded to love him and she's commanded to love her like Jesus loves us. It's about love. Remember when Jesus said, men will know you are my father. Or it's because you what? Love. This love. He defines or describes for them in verse 13 with a view of his going to Calvary to express this kind of love so they recognize it when they see him brutalized and hanging on the cross when they see him beat to a pulp his skin flayed hideous grotesque Brutal punishment. He says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Don't miss this. He says, what you're going to see in a few days is my manifestation so it's evident to you that I love you because I'm dying for you. There is no question about someone's love for you if they're willing to die in your place. That's love. That's God's love for us. He calls them, if you see in verse 13, friends. Everybody say friends. First time he actually emphasizes this with them. He calls them friends. Jesus wants you and I to be his friends. But now that is after they've been with him for three and a half years. They've left everything for him. They were totally committed. We know at least Peter was married. They had to have a mature relationship because she never saw him after he started following Jesus. And we have no record that she divorced him. He sacrificed because there was nothing more important to him than Jesus. All the other disciples as well loved Jesus more than anything and anyone else. They responded to his call. And when everybody else left him, when he was going to Jerusalem, the Bible says he said a hard thing. And the crowds, the thousands and thousands of people whom he healed their sick, opened their blinded eyes, gave them the ability to speak who were dumb, delivered them from demon possessions, healed them of their issues of blood, leukemia, Raise their dead. But they all left him. They left him when they saw. That there was nothing else. If he was going to go and die. They saw no advantage to themselves. And the Bible says they turned and walked with him no more. And Jesus looked at this group and said are you two going to go away? And they recommitted themselves and said, Lord, we're all in. Because we do believe that you are the one who gives us everlasting life simply through the words that you speak. So he calls them now friends. Because they have moved from just simply servants. Watch this. Watch this. They've moved from simply working for the Lord. This is personal. As personal as you can get. 
And Jesus recognizes this. And he says, I call you my friends. Verse 13. Look at 14. You are my friends if you do what I command you because they obeyed him. To this point, they had their moments where they were on the fence, just like us. But in the end, over the process of their faith, walk with Christ, they always sided with Jesus and gave him the benefit of the doubt, even when the going got tough. Jesus is looking for the same things from us today. We love one another as he loved us, that we experience his love so that we can then share that with each other. So he says, continue to do everything I'm telling you to do. You've already proven your commitment to us, to me. Verse 15. He says, no longer do I call you servants. You have been my servants to this point. Good church workers. You've been faithful. These things need to be done. Somebody's got to pass out the communion. Amen. Somebody's got to visit the sick. Amen. Somebody's got to care for the widows. Amen. Somebody's got to go and get the word out that Jesus loves you. That we, God is in need of church workers. Amen. But he says now y'all have moved to another place. There's an elevation beyond church exaltation. It's called a friendship with God. Moses is the only one I can remember in the Old Testament who God the Father called his friend. Now Jesus calls these 12, 11, because Judas has, is betraying him, friends. He says, I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know what his master is doing. He doesn't know what he's up to. You don't share the plan with just a servant. Servants serve. Servants aren't brought into the intimate secret circle. They just do what they're told. He says, now, I'm calling you friends. You've been elevated. Does anybody want to be elevated? Don't fool with me now. Do you want to be, I'm serious, elevated. I mean, I mean, you know, keep serving. You want to be faithful, but you want to go to another level in Christ. That's what he's saying. He says a servant doesn't know what his master's doing, but I have called you friends because I've told you all the things that my father has told me I've shared with you. Jesus takes us into the presence of him and the Father so that we commune with them as friends. Don't be satisfied with empty religion. Hallelujah. Don't be satisfied with going through the motions. Don't be satisfied with knowing when to stand, knowing when to sit, knowing when to raise, knowing when to... Tip the finger. Come on in. <clears throat> Come on in to the Father's house. There's joy in the Father's house. Come on in to the Father's house. There's peace in the Father's house. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Come on in, he says, to the Father's house. There's joy, unspeakable joy. In the Father's house. Sit at the table. Let's talk about your day. Tell me all about your troubles. Talk to me about who's bothering you. And let me tell you what I'm going to do about it. So when you come out of your closet after visiting with me and the Father in the Father's house, you'll have a peace that won't make any sense. They'll still be messing with you, but you'll be blessing them because you got a secret. The Lord told you, be not dismayed with air be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings, love abide. God will take care of you. 
Verse 16, you didn't choose me. And I need somebody to testify with me. I wouldn't choose me either. <laughs> he said, you didn't choose me. You didn't look for me. You wasn't searching for me. He said, I chose you. Somebody shout chosen. chosen. Say it one more time. Chosen. chosen. Say it one more time. Chosen. chosen. So don't worry about it if don't nobody care about you. You've been chosen by Jesus. Your mama may have rejected you. Your daddy may have done something to you. Your brothers and sisters may have messed you up. Nobody may care about you. They might have abused you your whole life. But don't worry about it. Jesus said, I chose you. And I didn't ask their permission when I brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I feel like preaching here tonight. God chose us in spite of our faults. In spite of our failures, in spite of what's happened, he chose us. Went past the Supreme Court members of the Sanhedrin. He didn't choose them. He went past the lawyers and the doctors, not saying none of them are going to get in, amen. He went past those who we think should be up top. He said, I chose you, fishermen, who smell like scales. I chose you, tax collector, who everybody hated and despised. You're a traitor to the Jewish nation. I chose you, Thomas. You a skeptic. You, you see a half glass, the, the, the glass half full or half empty. You ain't never got nothing good to say. But I chose you. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Am I talking to anybody here who knows you chosen? I wish I had time to preach this. I'm not going to take it. But after he gets done with this, he tells them, don't worry about the world. They're going to hate on you. The reason they're going to hate on you is not because you done done something, but because I chose you. They see favor all over you, and they can't explain it. They're talking about you, but they can't take your blessing. They're rejecting you, but you keep talking about praise the Lord. Whatever the devil throw at you, the kitchen sink, you rise above it. You don't kiss nobody's ring. Y'all thought I was going somewhere. You ain't got to. Because you've been chosen. Washed in the blood of the lamb. Delivered by the savior of the world. Protected by he who sits high and looks low. Your God controls everything. No weapon formed against you can prosper. It'll go out, but it will not work. Even though you die, yet shall you live again. Even death can't hold you down. You are chosen. He said, bear fruit. Bear fruit. Don't go with the fad. Don't try to make a splash. Be steady, Eddie. Keep on sharing the gospel seed in your home, on the job, by the way you live. Bless them that curse you, do good to them and do you harm. Somebody going to get it. Keep on bearing fruit until I come. And he ends it by affirming again love one another I want to close this and I want to give thanks to a young lady here she's going to be embarrassed but she'll get over it I'm even going to give her name because it touched my heart. This is what it's all about. Her name is Savannah Woody. And her sister left a note for me on Friday. Put it here on the offering table with my name on it. I could tell she was embarrassed. And she said, Open it by yourself. I said, okay. Put it in my pocket. 
got home and I forgot about it. And then it dawned on me. I put it in my pocket. Thank God my wife didn't do laundry that night. Amen. And I read it. I read it. I'm not going to go into all of it, Savannah. But what she said in essence in these words. I know that you love me. And I thank you for convincing me that God loves me too. Love one another as I have loved you. And I want to say thank you, Savannah. I know it's not easy. You just about beginning to be a teenager. And you got all kind of stuff going on. I've been there and it ain't a pretty thing. But we do love you. And God loves you. And we're going to love one another. As Christ has loved us. And that's how people will know. That we are followers of Jesus Christ so would y'all mind if you join me and Savannah at the altar as we close and I don't know about y'all but bump COVID Lord protect me now amen but I need a I need a group hug DJ I need a group hug. Love expresses itself. You don't want to have red bird religion. Male red bird with his wife, Mrs. Red Bird. And he she's up in the tree and he down there eating all the berries on the ground and he looking up at Mrs. Redbird talking about I love you I love you I love you and she looking at him as he's gorging and she ain't got nothing and she says prove it prove it prove it love proves itself sometimes it's just a touch the gentle touch it just says I care It's sometimes taking the teenage girl and saying, baby, it's going to be all right. Sometimes it's saying to her daddy, you just keep on doing what you're doing. The mama, keep on doing what you're doing. She going to appreciate it later. She going to know how much you loved her. But in the meantime, we going to not only pray, but support you. It's saying to Cambella that you ain't just a number here, girl. You a member of our family now. And Josh love you. Patience loves you. Your granddad and grandmama love you. But we love you too. So I'm going to ask that you would pray for somebody else right now. Right now where you are. You ain't got to be all up in close to them so that you know. Y'all spitting on each other if you're still cautious. I get it. Amen. But we're supposed to pray for one another like he told us to. Amen? So I want everybody to pair up with somebody. Just start praying for them right now. Ask God to bless them. Let the Holy Spirit, he'll guide you on what to say. Pair up with somebody right now. Look at them. Face them. Pray for them. Pairs. Thank you for being obedient, you all. Thank you. He, God has no cliques and clubs in his family. Amen. We may know other people more than others, some people more than others, but there's no cliques and no clubs in God's church. Not in his church, not in his family. He said, love one another as I have loved you. And like all real families, sometimes you can't stand your sister. Sometimes your brother can't stand you. But they still family. 
and you, and you wish them well. You want them to be blessed. Lord, hear these prayers. Honor us right now. Pray, pray for each other. Pray for each other, please. God's going to do something special. We don't know when you're coming, Lord. We don't know when you're coming, but if you come right now, we'll feel better about it. Hallelujah, because we're doing what you're telling us to do. Wash us of all iniquity. Bless my brother and sister whom we're praying for right now. You know what they need, Lord. You know what you want to do in their life. You know what the devil's also trying to mess with them about. Send deliverance in your holy name. War for us. War for us. You came to set us captives free. You came to heal the wounded, the brokenhearted. You came to heal the wounds emotionally, physically, spiritually. Yes, you did. Some of us need forgiveness right now, Lord, because we've been so deeply hurt that we haven't been able to move past it. We shut our hearts down and said, nobody going to do that to me no more. But yet we blocked you out. Heal it right now in Jesus' name. Let us forgive them even though they haven't asked us for it. We need you to forgive us. Make our hearts soft, Lord. Get rid of all the rocks and the stones. Remind us, dear Lord, that it's not about us keeping ourselves, you keep us. Maranatha, I'm asking that you put this in our spirit as, as a family, a, a church family, Lord, as believers, as Christians, wherever they are listening, that we'd all say to each other, Maranatha, come quickly, dear Lord, and help us to keep that in our four minds so that we'll live, dear Lord, uh, live right and, and seek holiness and seek purity. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You are the vine and we are the branches, Lord. Now let your life fluid flow through us. Keep us connected to you. Even when we want to break away, Lord, don't let us go. Hold us, fight for us. Until our day of redemption draws nigh. Until you come back for your church. We want to go to back to be with you. We don't want to be left behind. Now this is the first Sunday, dear Lord, in 2022. We don't know what's going to happen, but you do. And we're not going to be afraid. We're going to keep looking up every day and be prepared. Hallelujah. And in the meantime, we're going to enjoy our relationship with you. I thank you, Lord. This is, I, feel your, I feel your spirit doing something special for us today. Breaking some stuff that I don't think we're going to be the same. In Jesus' name. Bless now that person I just prayed for. Bless them real good, God. Bless them real good. And help us to love each other. And when the devil brings gossip to bring division, when the devil makes us talk about each other, when the devil calls us name, let us stand up and say, I'm not having that. That's my family member. In the name of Jesus, I bind that gossip in spirit. Hallelujah. It brings divisions in the body. No more, no more, no more. Make us one as you and the Father are one, Jesus. We want to go into the Father's house. Take us up there. We want to be friends. We want you to call us friends. Friends you can trust with your inner secrets. We won't put your business out there. Won't expose you. We'll, we'll, we'll cover each other. Not exposing each other's sins. We'll cover by grace. Not act like it ain't there. We'll call each other out. But it'll be in love. Because that's pleasing to you. Let everybody who comes in here, dear Lord, make us one. Put love amongst us so that whoever comes in our presence online or in the building will know that we are your followers because we love each other like you love us. Then you'll be pleased. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. 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 Bless somebody with a word right now. Come on, let's give while we're at the altar.
and then we going home. Amen. Come on, Bobby, be prominent. Let's give while we're at the altar and we're going home. I love you, baby. saying you're pleased tonight I hear it all we've done is lift up your name and we honored you and I thank you bless these gifts bless these offerings we're not going to worry about it you know how to take care of us help us to do our part allow it to help us to continue to get the word out to whoever is willing to hear Jesus is coming soon, and with his help, you'll be ready. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Everybody say it, amen. 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 Can we depart a little old school way? Is that all right? This is really old school, and I need some of you old school folks to kind of come with me. Don't leave me out here hanging. I'm going to be mad. Y'all still got to pray for me. God, God's still working on me. Amen. Let the church say. Y'all know y'all part. Let the church say. Let the church say. All right, all right. That, that was a warm-up. That was a warm-up. Let's do it right, y'all. Let's do it right. Hallelujah. Got to get that church rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody want a little bit of this? Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm a witness. Come on, DJ. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Y'all know I ain't got no sense. Do you know him? Do you know him? Hey, y'all. Do you know? him amen 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 I'm a witness I'm a witness y'all know I ain't got no sense I'm a witness 